Deputy Prime Minister and uh, Minister for Finance, the Honorable Professor Biman Prasad, Asia Pacific Applied Economics Association, Professor Paresh Narayan, uh, Governor of the Reserve Bank, Mr. Arif Ali, uh, Permanent Secretary for Finance, uh, Mr. Shiri Gaunda, uh, CEO and, um, of the uh, FCCC, Mr. Joel Abraham, and um, the Chairman, Mr. Tikundu Ndua, CEO of the Consumer Council, Seema Shandil, uh, CEO of FCEF, my good friend and neighbor, uh, Mr. Kameli Batiwet, distinguished presenters and panelists, captains of industry, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, Bulavinaka, and a very good afternoon to you all. Today I'm absolutely delighted to join you on this, uh, in this very important forum. And I thank FCCC for organizing this forum and for inviting me to speak about something that is central to Fiji's economic growth and prosperity. It is so refreshing to start the new year with exchanging views and ideas in progressing our economy. Ideas matter for better economic policies. But th these ideas are ultimately a means to an end. It's about using appropriate and right policies to make people's lives better, creating jobs, expanding opportunities, and promoting sustainability. Ladies and gentlemen, the theme for today's uh, public lecture is new approaches to economic progress. The backdrop to this is the question where do we want Fiji to be in the next 10 to 20 years? What will be tomorrow like if we all work together and create a new future economically together? To strengthen our economic resilience and remain competitive in the face of economic challenges, we need to identify new opportunities, build new engines of growth. This includes developing policies, to trigger transformational effort. In order to overcome the obstacles of the 21st century and better understand the needs of Fiji, we need to see things in a fresh perspective. Ladies and gentlemen, let me share my thoughts on some strategies for Fiji. <coughs> this one is actually an old one. Ease of doing business. We all know the importance of investments and its centrality to Fiji's economic growth and sustainable development. It has the potential to translate into widespread, widespread benefits, such as the enhancement of productive capacity, job creation, and improvements in the standard of living, and transfer of technology and know-how. It is imperative that we make doing business easier. In the three weeks since I've taken office, I have had several key meetings with key stakeholders. And I have noticed that there are still major uh, uh, bottlenecks for investors that discourage new investment and reinvestment activities in Fiji. And this is hindering investment, as you all know. We need to resolve these issues. We need to harmonize and streamline processes and remove bottlenecks. One of my top priorities, and I'll be looking forward to all of you to help me, is to currently work out ways to solve the issues of unnecessary regulatory compliance and administrative requirements uh, to ensure that we start uh, conducting business easier. Uh, just, uh, just to give you an example, um, when we got into office, we got a call from Lalvala. They had been issued a stop order in September with absolutely no explanation why the stop order was issued. Um, as we all know, Lalvala is represented by one of the richest men in, in, in the world. And it was causing concern. Uh, so uh, thanks to the Prime Minister, thanks to Mr. Ngavoka, we all got our heads together and we released the stop order on Monday. Lovell is back constructing a hangar that's worth about 30 million. 
So they had already spent nine million. Unfortunately, I think we will be doing a lot of that in the next few months, just trying to remove bottlenecks. Um, uh, Dials is another one that I was just working on on Monday. And this is the reality of what we are facing right now, but I, I know and I'm convinced that together we will uh, uh, put to bed some of the concerns that we've had for some time. Trades and supply chains. We aim to increase Fiji's trading volume, uh, and this is just repeating what uh, the Honorable Minister of Finance had said, by diversifying Fiji's exports so that they spread across a large number of products and trading partners. In order to do this, it is vital to build competitive advantages, and this is possible by redirecting incentives and initiatives. This will include initiatives and programs to build capacities in MSMEs to engage in cross-border trade. It, it is also absolutely important for us to look into the diversification of supply chains to better prepare for and mitigate effects of disruptions in the future. In recent years, global supply chains have experienced a series of disruptions and have contributed to broader economic uncertainty. Over-reliance on a single source of supply was greatly tested during the COVID-19 pandemic, where countries were unable to access critical supplies. It makes more sense to diversify supply chains through nearshoring or exploring other countries that offer an economic, economically viable alternative. By spreading sourcing, production, and shipping of goods and services across, across economically and geographically diverse nations, the risk of a single country shocking global supply chains due to natural or political factors is significantly lowered. It is also important to have risk management and continuity plans in place that involve the private sector in order to avoid supply chain disruption, disruptions. New threats such as cyber ransom attacks emerging alongside more traditional and long acknowledged supply risks such as supplier bankruptcy. Transport and logistics services are the backbone to trade, hence investments in improving transport infrastructure are absolutely critical to ensuring that supply chains uh, uh, disruption is mitigated. When we talk about logistics, the current challenges with the global freight system comes to mind in every business. International shipping rates are at an all-time high. Although the COVID-19 pandemic is to blame, Fiji businesses have been reeling with this problem since pre-COVID times. Hence, it is vital to explore innovative approaches to resolving long-standing issues such as these. One mechanism we are exploring in terms of innovative trade and economic cooperation is the agreement called the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework, which is an example of a platform that has the potential to address issues and some of our challenges in the 21st century. The IPF is a US-led initiative that Fiji is currently negotiating. It is a modern forward-looking agreement which will evolve as a powerful block that addresses modern-day barriers to trade, such as logistics, connectivity, compatible systems, border facilitation, and address infrastructure gaps. IPEF, more so than any other traditional free trade agreement, will also leverage public-private partnership and business-to-business -business initiatives and has an opportunity to deliver FDIs and technology transfer. Import substitution through strategic development of the agricultural sector. In today's day and age, every country needs economic and food security. Therefore, import substitution is key to restoring and creating food independence in Fiji. Fiji is already self-sufficient in pork, canned meat, and chicken. The business model can be studied and replicated to other agricultural livestock and crops. 
Economic models like sustainable smallholder integration have, seen as a, uh, have been seen as a successful approach by large businesses such as Goodman Fielder and British American Tobacco, providing raw materials and capacity building to farmers to support their businesses as a whole. These types of models reduce the uncertainty related to farming activities. It aims to integrate smallholders into commercial value chains in response to this broad spectrum of risks and trade-offs. There is also a potential for Fiji to position itself as a regional business and innovation hub for manufacturing. To do so, we need to attract frontier investments and strengthen our overall ecosystem for doing business. One huge potential, I am told, for Fiji is becoming the regional manufacturing hub for pharmaceuticals to create seamless access to affordable medications due to reduction in the fuel freight component for the Pacific Island region. Another potential is setting up assembly lines for renewable energy technologies such as solar panels. Nearshoring is another important area to explore because Fiji offers a cost-effective alternative for countries like Australia and New Zealand. IT or information technology nearshoring is a booming industry globally. Fiji can introduce the right type of tailor-made incentives to enable foreign companies to relocate information technology-related tasks to Fiji. For example, software development from overseas companies in Fiji. In addition, with the viability of several companies at risk as a result of COVID-19 pandemic, companies focusing on revenue generation and outsourcing on non-core non functions. Fiji has already started realizing the benefits of outsourcing, as alluded to by Honorable Honorable Professor Biman Prasad as well. 4,000 jobs were created, which has doubled post-pandemic. This is one of the most uh, promising and emerging industries which continues to grow. Encouraging cooperatives and SMEs. Cooperatives and small and medium enterprises are critical to Fiji's economy in that it drives innovation, generates economic activity, and creates employment in emerging markets. As the minister responsible for cooperatives and SMEs, the greater part of my, uh, of my undertaking is to, to raise productivity of cooperatives and SMEs to obtain the necessary returns on investment. But with raising productivity comes hand-holding. Therefore, business advisory services and business training programs remain vital to promote a resilient, sustainable business, and that is what we aim for. Ladies and gentlemen, helping SMEs will help build back better, build, will help build Fiji back better and stronger. A post-pandemic recovery backdrop, which everyone present here today has an equal part to play in. If anything, the pandemic has taught us the value of the digital economy and the noteworthiness of e-commerce platforms. This has opened, opened up numerous opportunities, such as reaching a wider consumer base and healthy competition in the market. To gain ground on the improvements and solutions to shape SMEs in the digital age, it was all important for me to meet the representatives of this very, this growing industry. I met the uh, Fiji SME business uh, op uh, owner network uh, who presented uh, very constructive feedback on where government assistance is required. I am looking forward to having more meetings and discussions with various segments of SMEs, of the SME industry in the coming days. Therefore, I wish to assure our SME community that we are here to listen and improve the business environment. Ladies and gentlemen, whilst we recognize the demand and potential advantage that it uh, offers to SMEs, hurdles need to be addressed as more SMEs uh, embrace the digital platforms.
One of the major components will be looking into assisting SMEs to adapt and incorporate online tra trading and digital platforms. Having SMEs on digital platforms also requires building knowledge and creating awareness of regulatory and compliance matters, namely on unfair business practices and inadequate online dispute resolution. Ladies and gentlemen, clearly the task ahead of us is huge, but I believe that uh, together with the government, uh, we, can, uh, we can assist each other to recover and rebuild back in a way that creates sustainable economic growth and economic progress alongside with tackling the adverse impact of the pandemic, climate change, and other exogenous shocks caused by geopolitical tensions. Therefore, it is no secret that this government, and I'm sure the Honorable Biman Prasad agrees, uh, will need your support, your constructive input, and collaboration so that we can build something better together. For us in government, we will bring all our knowledge, passion, experience, and persistence to the important task at hand. Building upon existing policies, setting up improved direction to Fiji's trade and investments, and ensuring that we achieve results. I am conscious that the expectations are very high, and we shall do our utmost to move Fiji forward. I look forward to discussing more ideas with you today and in the, um, in the days and months ahead and hearing your thoughts after uh, the, the panel today. With these words, thank you for your attention and we're not